thank you for coming this morning. Uh, I'm Matt Pizarski from Preservation New Jersey Board of Trustees. Uh, just as a little bit of background before we go into the 10 most list, uh, Preservation New Jersey was actually founded in 1978. It's a nonprofit organization that helps homeowners, organizations, public officials, and citizen advocates working to preserve the historic neighborhoods and sites that are important to our communities. PNJ produces this annual list of New Jersey's 10 most endangered historic places, in addition to other advocacy programs, provides educational workshops, publishes an interactive website, serves as a resource for technical assistance and general advice for the public, and addresses legislation and public policies that impact New Jersey's historic places and communities. The 10 Most Endangered Historic Places program spotlights the irreplaceable historic, architectural, cultural, and archeological resources in New Jersey that are in imminent danger of being lost. The act of listing these resources acknowledges their importance to the heritage of New Jersey and draws attention to the predicaments that endanger their survival and the survival of historic resources statewide. The list generated from nominations by the public aims to attract new perspectives and ideas to sites in desperate need of creative solutions. Several challenges face properties on this year's endangered sites list, including neglect and deferred maintenance, threats incurred by redevelopment and new construction, difficulties raising adequate historic preservation funding, and the need for creative adaptive reuse proposals. Half of the sites on this year's list are owned by government, highlighting a recurring theme of neglect by entities entrusted by the public with the care of our historic resources. The causes of endangerment among government properties vary from prolonged deferred maintenance damage by forces of nature to a general lack of awareness or respect for the resource. In all cases, insufficient financial resources are a root problem, hindering government from adequately maintaining and protecting their historic resources. As we acknowledge each year, selections to the 10 most endangered historic places list are based on the likelihood that historic buildings and places can be brought back to useful and productive life. PNJ proudly points to many properties previously listed among the 10 most endangered that have now been saved and preserved or rehabilitated and have once again become character defining and economy boosting assets to New Jersey's communities. As we announce this year's list, we are encouraged by the Borough of Metuchen's recent announcement that it is under contract to buy the Forum Theater, which was included on our list in 2016. The borough plans to incorporate a rehabilitated forum theater into a new Metuchen Arts District that will include a restaurant and other spaces to enjoy the arts. Although PNJ's 10 Most Endangered Properties list is published once per year, the fight for the preservation of our historic and cultural resources is daily, and the news of the Metuchen Theater is evidence that bringing awareness of such threats can bring about creative solutions. Selections for the 2019 10 Most Endangered list are based on three criteria. Historic significance and architectural integrity, the critical nature of the threat identified, and the likelihood that inclusion on the list will have a positive impact on efforts to protect the resource. So without further ado, the 2019 10 Most Endangered Historic Places in New Jersey list. First is East Point Lighthouse in the township of Mars River, Cumberland County. East Point Lighthouse, built in 1849, is the second oldest existing lighthouse in New Jersey. While it underwent a full restoration just two years ago with state and federal funding assistance, it is under threat by the ravages of nature. Sitting on an outcropping of land where the Mars River enters the Delaware Bay in Cumberland County. Unfortunately, the mouth of the river and the adjacent bay shore are rapidly eroding and tidal waters are now threatening the lighthouse. The erosion has already washed out the protective dunes and the stewards of the lighthouse are left with sandbag brigades in a futile attempt to hold back tidal waters and storm surge. While the site owner, the state of New Jersey, is currently studying mitigation alternatives, they need to act more expediently to protect this natural, national and state register of historic places listed site before it is gone forever. Historic firehouses statewide. Historic firehouses are unique and iconic structures that represent civic commitment to protect and serve the community in times of need. 
Our nation's firehouses began to be purpose-built in the 19th century and a few cases earlier. As emergency services evolve, so too has equipment. Today's fire engines, ladder trucks, and ambulances are much larger and heavier than their predecessors, and as a result, many historic firehouses cannot fit modern emergency equipment. Communities often respond by relocating stations or demolishing historic stations and constructing new. This has created a preservation crisis as these significant buildings of a community's past are being abandoned or disappearing entirely. We see a recent example of this in Milltown Borough, where they are currently undergoing a $12 million project to construct a new firehouse and public works facility with no commitment as to the future of the community's two historic firehouses. We know that these structures can be adaptively reused for a number of functional and interesting purposes, such as libraries, offices, restaurants, bars, and even homes. Preservation New Jersey calls upon communities to think creatively and proactively to seek out new uses and or owners for these structures rather than abandon or demolish them. The Isaac Corwin House, also known as Larison's Turkey Farm, in the borough of Chester, Mars County. In 1829, James Topping, a master cabinet maker and owner of an iron mine, purchased the circa 1800 Isaac Corwin house and surrounding 53 acres of land in Chester Borough. While under Topping's ownership, the simple farmhouse expanded to become a stately home. In 1945, the house and property were sold to Willis Larison and became Larison's Turkey Farm Inn. Through its operation as Larison's, it became a well-loved roadside landmark known by both residents and visitors to the region. In the name of meeting the town's affordable housing requirements, however, a developer sued the Chester Borough, who ultimately agreed to the demolition of the Corwin House and another historic structure as part of a settlement. The plight of the Isaac Corwin House is reflective of a larger issue related to the state's refusal to actively manage its obligation to ensure the creation of adequate affordable housing. Without a functioning council on affordable housing office or rules, Developers and municipalities are now beholden to the courts to regulate their affordable housing obligations. So long as the state of New Jersey continues to allow the courts to implement affordable housing policy, Preservation New Jersey fears that other historic resources will be at risk of demolition. The Lackawanna train terminal in the township of Montclair, Essex County. The Lackawanna train terminal opened to great acclaim in 1913 designed by the ill-fated William Hall Boxford, who went down on the Titanic, is served as the terminus of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad between Hoboken and Montclair, which allowed thousands of local residents the ability to commute to New York City in relative comfort and ease until its final run in the 1980s. Having survived two previous demolition attempts, the Lackawanna train terminal is now under threat again from a developer who intends to demolish the historic train platform sheds to double the size of the surface parking lot. The Montclair Historic Preservation Commission has attempted to communicate the importance of maintaining the structures within the new site plan, but unfortunately the Montclair Planning Board approved the site plan, including the demolition of a significant portion of the train sheds. Preservation New Jersey supports the view of the Montclair Historic Preservation Commission, who calls for a more sensitive redevelopment of the site. The Lee Brothers Pavilion borough of Mount Arlington in Morris County. The Lee Brothers Park Pavilion, located at Lake Hopencon, is a unique surviving example of lake-style recreational architecture in New Jersey. Brothers Clarence J. Lee and Edwin Lee purchased the 10-plus acre property in 1919 when Mount Arlington was a major tourist destination. Originally operating out of small structures on the edge of the lake, the Lee Brothers constructed a new pavilion for the 1924 season. When Clarence Lee's son decided to retire in 1995, he donated the property to Morris County so that the pavilion and surrounding parkland would be preserved and not be subdivided into a lakefront development. Unfortunately, the pavilion has been largely unused and is showing signs of deterioration, so much so that the local fire commissioner recently forbade his firefighters from entering the building due to its structural instability. The county has demonstrated its support of this site by including funding for its stabilization over several budget cycles, totaling more than $1 million to date, yet the county has not taken any steps to ensure the preservation of the building. It is critical that all stakeholders work together to make this unique, beloved 
local historic landmark a priority in his plans for the future of the lake and surrounding area. First, by using already allocated funds to stabilize the structure before it is lost forever. The Park Theater, also known as the Passion Play Theater, in the city of Union, Hudson County. The Park Theater was erected in 1930-1932 as the Passion Play Theater, named for the increasingly popular annual Lenten performance put on by Holy Family Roman Catholic Church. The Spanish Renaissance style and Art Deco influenced facility included classrooms, a state-of-the-art stage with a wide screen, an organ, and an orchestra pit worthy of any grand movie palace of its day. Largely vacant, save for a couple caring tenants and former classrooms on the upper floors, the building urgently needs repairs. This is the only theater owned by the Archdiocese of Newark, which has many buildings to maintain with a limited amount of funds. The diocese is open to leasing the building to an outside organization willing to take on the project and make it a destination similar to other restored downtown entertainment venues like the Lowe's New Jersey Theater in Jersey City or the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank. Someone is needed to champion the cause before this architectural and cultural treasure is lost forever. Port Colden Manor in the township of Washington, Warren County. The 1835 Port Colden Manor is the Port Colden Historic District's largest and most impressive contributing resource. It is an outstanding provincial example of Greek Revival architecture built by William Dusenberry in 1835, who earlier erected Port Colden Settlement's first storehouse on a lot just north of the Mars Canal in 1833. Dusenberry purportedly intended for the large hotel to serve as a summer resort. The building became a boarding school for girls in the mid-18th century, was used for local school district offices for much of the 20th century, and then was converted into professional offices in the 1980s. The current owner has made some minimal repairs while they negotiate with the township for approval to convert the structure into apartments, which at this time seems to be at an impasse. Preservation New Jersey urges all parties to come to an agreement soon before deterioration causes irreparable harm to the local landmark. U.S. Animal Quarantine Station in the city of Clifton, Passaic County. The United States Animal Quarantine Station in the city of Clifton, also known as the Ellis Island for Animals, was developed between 1900 and 1907 to temporarily isolate foreign animals along the east coast of the U.S. in order to safeguard the nation's livestock and poultry against disease of foreign origin. The quarantine station, which when constructed, contained 27 buildings was utilized until the prevalence of air travel in the 1950s made a new facility near Stewart Air Force Base more practical. The city of Clifton acquired the property in 1966, but has had very success with reusing and maintaining the buildings. While several buildings are being actively used by the city, local citizens are rallying to save the remaining unused and underutilized buildings on the site, but has a long road of fundraising and rehabilitation ahead of them to ensure that the site's preservation before the buildings fall victim to demolition by neglect. The Wildwoods, City of Wildwood, City of North Wildwood, Borough of Wildwood Crest, and the Borough of West Wildwood in Cape May County. The Wildwoods are a collection of four towns on a barrier island at the southern end of New Jersey that for over 100 years has been a popular shore resort desired for its beaches and boardwalk. While known for their 1950s doo-wop motels, which was listed in the 10 most in 2005, the Wildwoods also had many late 19th and early 20th century residential and commercial buildings in classic American vernacular styles. The Wildwoods are threatened by typical development pressures along the Jersey Shore. In the past two decades, buyers discovered the Wildwoods lower prices and a building boom has begun to transform the island from doo-wop motels older single-family homes into condos and McMansions. The threat is compounded by FEMA's post-Sandy regulations that make it difficult to renovate or restore older buildings. In order to effectuate change, citizens need to organize to pressure the four municipalities to establish historic preservation commissions with enforceable ordinances to protect the integrity of the historic properties and to prevent the Wildwoods from falling victim to the ever-growing homogeneity of this Jersey Shore region where one municipality is indistinguishable from the rest.
finally the Van Ness House in the township of Fairfield, Essex County. The Van Ness House was built by one of the earliest Dutch families to settle in western Essex County, Simon Van Ness, who brought his family to Fairfield in 1701 and was one of the founders of the Reformed Church of Fairfield in 1720. The house was likely built circa 1760 and is a typical 18th century farmhouse in the Dutch brownstone tradition of northern New Jersey, which predates the Revolutionary War. Currently owned by the township of Fairfield, the building has now sat vacant for a number of years and is uninhabitable due to lack of maintenance. The municipality has cited insufficient funds to properly stabilize or maintain the structure. Preservation New Jersey encourages Fairfield Township to redouble its efforts to repair the structure and find a suitable occupant for this important piece of regional history before it is too late. With that, uh, we have several uh, speakers and representatives. Oh, I'd like to absolutely <laughs> thank the committee, the 10 most committee, um, for working diligently over the last several months on putting together this list. Um, it is not an easy task, I will tell you that. Uh, we have a lot of resources and uh, selecting 10 is a challenge each year. Um, now, on to the representatives from the different uh, sites listed today. Uh, this is in no particular order, and, and if you'd like to uh, come up and say a few words about your site, you're welcome to. Um, would Marty Kane, is Marty Kane here? Would you like to come up and speak about the Lee Brothers Park Pavilion? Um, Lake Opakum was once a major northeast resort. Today it's, it's mostly residences, but in its day it had over 40 hotels and rooming houses, uh, two amusement parks, dance halls, everything. Most of that has been lost. We, we, we retain a few of the buildings today, but, but one of the really cute, uh, a little bit unorthodox buildings for maybe a list like this, was this an old style lake pavilion where people just came up to go to the beach on an inland lake um, to get their hot dogs, to rent a bathing suit back then, you know, and spend maybe that one day all summer they had to come out to the country. Um, the pavilion uh, we thought would be renovated years and years ago when it was donated to Morris County. Um, and we've had a, a lot of st uh, starts and stops. And unfortunately, um, its feasibility study was done five years ago since then the building has been left to deteriorate. Uh, the, the Mars County freeholders have shown a lot of support. We're hoping that this nomination really is what we need now to, to carry the ball home and finally get some work going before the building uh, this, uh, is demolished through neglect. So I can't thank Preservation New Jersey enough for considering this application for a little bit different type of building uh, and hopefully we'll have a really good report in the years to come of what's going on with this building. So thank you. my colleagues that have traveled with me to Trenton today, uh, Caroline Kane Levy, who's uh, a member of the HPC, and Priscilla Eshelman, who's an advocate of Lackawanna Terminal. Um, as we heard, Lackawanna Terminal is under threat of, of demolition. The historic train sheds that make up about one third of the uh, train shed that actually look, makes it look like a train station has been um, approved for demolition by our planning board. And uh, thankfully, the uh, New Jersey, Preservation New Jersey has, has, has actually um, acknowledged the historic aspect of the entire site, the entire Lackawanna train uh, station. Um, it is listed on three registers, national, local, and state register. It certainly is an historic site. And I wish, I hope, and we're hoping the, uh, the uh, commission hopes that through this 
wonderful acknowledgement from uh, Preservation New Jersey that the planning board and um, the powers that be in our township may now realize what a uh, historic jewel this is and that the entire site should be saved. So uh, we did bring some information here. Uh, save Montclair if anybody is interested to go online or you can certainly speak to myself and my two colleagues and we'll keep you up to date on the progress of what's happening. We have a very limited window of time. Uh, the resolution has been passed to demolish the trade shed, so we have uh, approximately a month and a half. So any support that we can get from any preservation like-minded individuals or townships or entities would be truly appreciated. Thank you. All right, um, Dean Carlos, would you like to say a few words on the Park Theater? I'm a representative of the Park Theater. It's a theater in Union City. It's a 1600 theater, pretty big for the area. It's one of the remaining from what used to be um, a, a group of theater that were operating as off-Broadway, just right across uh, the Hudson River from New York. And the, situa the current situation now is that the theater has been vacant uh, for a couple of years, but uh, there's two remaining tenants, myself and a violin maker. I'm an artist myself, and I've been in, in the theater for three years uh, trying to bring, uh, to create art uh, and, and create an artistic community, which uh, we are lacking in our town. And at the same time, we are uh, trying to bring this theater back. It's currently owned by the parish uh, of North, Archidiocese of North. And, um, or, uh, or interest is to uh, create uh, an artistic community and, and to find, create a solution to bring uh, the theater into, a, turn it into a cultural center. Uh, I appreciate uh, being incorporated in the list. I hope this, uh, we can get the word out there that, uh, about the beauty of this theater and uh, the possibilities of bringing it back to life. Um, Sharon Olson from the Van Ness House. Thank you for coming today. So, uh, I'd like to thank Preservation New Jersey for this program of nominating endangered houses, and to Michael Mills, I don't know him by sight, who interviewed me during this process. I'm not a committee, I'm a, I'm a I'm the only person who nominated this house. My name's Sharon Olson. I'm a native Californian, a retired librarian, a poet, and now in my retired years, I've become a genealogist. I've lived in New Jersey since 2012. My mother, however, was born here and can trace lines, Dutch and English, back to the early years of the state. And as for my relation to this house, my fourth great-grandmother, Nellie Van Ness, was the daughter of Peter Van Ness, who inherited the homestead from his father, Isaac. I use the word homestead because I'm not sure experts have been able to date with certainty the older parts of the current structure, although I've seen in one photograph a foundation stone dated 1740. I have visited the town of Vianen in the Netherlands where Cornelis van Ness and Meke van den Birchgraf were married in 1625, and in 1641 this couple emigrated to Beverick, which became Albany, New York, and it was their grandson, Simon Van Ness, who settled in the Horseneck area of New Jersey, buying 300 acres around 1699, which the family later settled properly with the New Jersey proprietors. Many generations of the Van Ness family have lived in this house. My first visit to see it was in 2011, and I've returned several times since. Um, it is on the National Register. My photo of the house appears in an article in the January 2019 issue of the Genealogical Magazine of New Jersey, co-written by Chris Schopfer and myself. The article ties together the connections between the Sanford and Vaness families in Essex and Morris counties. I have high hopes 
that Fairfield Township will find a way to preserve this lovely farmhouse and the vibrant history it represents. All right, is Dave here from, oh, Dave uh, Ariniak yep. from Milltown Firehouse. Uh, I'm, I'm Dave Ariniak, I'm from Milltown, New Jersey. Uh, also here um, representing Milltown Historical Society's Barbara Wright, our president. Um, our firehouse was built in the 1800, late 1800s, originally as a schoolhouse, and then it saw use as a uh, borough hall and firehouse combination, and as time went on, uh, the Milltown built another firehouse in the 1920s. Um, and th those firehouses stood for, well, uh, until now. They're still standing, but the town is uh, undergoing uh, some expansion and they're building a new uh, depart Department of Public Works and uh, a firehouse combination on a separate property. So right now there's no commitment from the town on saving the firehouses, but uh, we've seen other firehouses um, in the state repurposed as community centers, uh, art centers, um, uh, and private residences. And, and businesses, apartments, there's so many different uses that, that can uh, uh, that they can be repurposed into. So um, due to the, uh, our South Main Street firehouse is located right across the parking lot from our uh, small uh, museum, the Milltown Museum. So we are hoping that the town will, uh, will at least consider giving it to the Historical Society for us to expand our museum and um, share the story of Milltown. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Great, and I do have a short statement from representatives of the U.S. Animal Quarantine Station. Uh, we would like to thank the Preservation New Jersey organization for including the efforts of the U.S. Animal Quarantine Station on this year's list of the 10 most endangered historic places in New Jersey. The Clifton Historic Quarantine Station Preservation Foundation was formed earlier this year to preserve and restore the many historic barns located at 900 Main Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey. We look forward to the many fundraising events that will be held in the near future to ensure we fulfill our mission and our goals. And thank you for bringing statewide attention to this historic site, referred to by many as the Ellis Island for Animals facility played a historic and vital role in preventing the spread of disease from imported animals for approximately 80 years. For additional information and opportunities to help preserve the barns, please visit our Facebook page. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Clifton Historic Quarantine Station Preservation Foundation, that's a long name, we sincerely thank you for this acknowledgement. Mary Sandra Kula, President. Is there, are there any representatives of any of the sites listed here today? All right, if not, then um, I'd like to invite everybody over to the Barracks Museum where we are having a reception. And there's food. I haven't seen it, but I hear it's good. And um, I want to thank Courtney for putting this all together. You're doing a wonderful work for Preservation Nature. All right, thank you everyone for coming. And those of you representing um, a site, if we could just grab one picture if everybody could get together. Yeah. I wish Paul can keep holding up. By the way, Paul Muir is, is one of on our board of directors and a great sign holder. <laughs> and I realized it was a requirement. Okay, let me finish.